in a world where carbs are your enemy, you need one man to help you fight your battles. That man is Jimmy. Combating nutrition, disinformation, and general bull. It's Jimmy Rants. JimmyRants.com. You've been looking for a quality brand of CBD oil and didn't know where to turn? Let me introduce you to Botan CBD. Go to BotanCBD.com. That's B O T A N CBD.com, and you'll see a full line of CBD oil products. The benefits of CBD oil are plentiful, including pain relief, anti inflammation, mental clarity and focus, stress and anxiety reliever, and the list goes on. I've been using Botan CBD oil on my sciatica pain and it makes it disappear. You can rub it on the body or take it orally and you can trust that Botan CBD is the highest quality CBD oil on the market. They are a pharmaceutical grade organic CBD small batch and handcrafted for you. Head on over to BotanCBD.com and use the code Jimmy at checkout for 15% off your first order. Live life well. Botan CBD. What's up, what's up, you guys? Welcome back to another Instagram Live. And we're here with another episode of Jimmy Rants. JimmyRants.com is the website. And the show's pretty cool. Here's how it works. We start off over on Instagram, so go follow me there. At Livin' Low Carb Man, L-I-V-I-N-L-O-W-C-A-R-B-M-A-N. Once you're there, you can engage live, just like Fat Fueled Fitness, and Robin, and Texas Livingston, and so many more coming in right now. If you missed the live, you can watch it on replay for up to 24 hours, so go follow me on Instagram. But if you do miss the Instagram, if for some reason you just didn't catch it on the replay, it's all good. Go and watch it on YouTube. We put all the past episodes up on YouTube. I believe this is episode 250 on YouTube, so go follow me there. Type in a keyword search, Jimmy Ranch, you'll find the show. Finally, we have the best of the best moments of this here show in podcast form. It's the Jimmy Ranch podcast over on Apple Podcasts as well as Stitcher. JimmyRants.com is the website. Today's Jimmy Rants is all about another one of those studies that has come out. And it ain't pretty if you eat a ketogenic diet. So those of you that follow my work, you realize that keto is pretty much under an all-out assault right now. I don't know if you've noticed that, (laughs) but anything and everything that they can throw at those of us that eat a low-carb, moderate-protein, high-fat diet, they are trying right now desperately. And the latest thing that they're trying is they're putting out a study in a pretty major medical journal that is making the claim that eating eggs will increase and hike your risk for heart disease and early death. I am not kidding you. So what I wanna talk about here today is who actually believes that eating eggs, a real whole food that God made, absolutely the most perfect food on the planet, Who, pray tell, believes, actually believes eating eggs raises heart disease and death risk? Apparently some people, because we have news articles galore. I only printed two of them, but there are a million of these articles out there today, you guys. And I was tipped off to this one coming earlier this week. It was embargoed. You weren't allowed to talk about it until today. So we're talking about it today here on Jimmy Rant. So let me get to... Uh, Let me get to the one in the New York Times first. So this is the article that was in the New York Times. Are eggs bad for your heart health? Maybe. A new analysis found that for each additional 300 milligrams a day of cholesterol consumed in the diet and the more eggs that you ate, the greater the risk for cardiovascular disease. Guys, can I just tell you what an unfactual statement that is? Because... 
The way the body works is, and we mentioned this in my Jimmy rants from earlier today, if your body, when we're talking about like the new statin replacement drugs, when your body cannot produce enough cholesterol to do the essential things that cholesterol does in your body, um, you can eat all of the abundance of cholesterol in your diet that you want. It's going to tightly regulate what your cholesterol is. It has no bearance. Your dietary cholesterol has little to no bearance on what your blood cholesterol levels will be. You know what raises uh, cholesterol in the body almost better than anything? Carbohydrate. When you eat sugars, when you eat grains, whenever you eat these refined crappy garbage as I describe them, that is what increases the fat in the blood much more so than if you ate fat and cholesterol in your diet. But people all believe, well, I can't eat saturated fat in my diet. It'll all clog my arteries. I can't eat uh, cholesterol from eggs because that's going to increase my cholesterol in my blood. No, no, it does not. Go look it up, you guys. Uh, one researcher actually ate, he, he tested his cholesterol. He ate 19 eggs in one sitting. And then he went and tested his cholesterol one hour postprandial and it went up two points, two points. So statistically, it stayed the same. So if cholesterol in the diet was supposed to raise your cholesterol in your blood, it does not do that. If you're just joining us, there is a brand new study that is making all the rounds today all across health media. And it always happens, you guys, and we've been seeing this happen more and more lately with keto being so popular in the culture. And the new one now is claiming that eggs, a real whole food, uh, food that's out there, eggs, I've got 27 backyard chickens back there that are laying me beautiful, beautiful eggs. Eggs supposedly raise your risk of heart disease and early death. So let's see what this is based on. A large new study may help resolve the confusion about eggs. The new analysis looked at data. This is key, guys. When we're talking about uh, study results and new studies, you always have to see what are they looking at. Are they looking at people or are they looking at data? The new analysis looked at data from six large prospective studies that involved 30,000 participants with an average follow-up of more than 17 years. So remember the other day I mentioned this. Whenever you see a big old number like that as the number of study participants, that should not impress you. That should make you go, where's the RCT? Where's the randomized controlled trial? Because at the end of the day, it's RCTs that we're looking for, not big numbers. Because all they did was they take, okay, here's a study, here's a study, here's a study, here's a study. And they found six of these and they just smooshed them all together and they said, hmm, let's come to some kind of conclusion about what this means. And remember, when they do this, this is called a prospective study, a cohort study, um, a, an observational epidemiological type of study where they smush together all these past studies and then try to have some kind of a conclusion based on that gobbledygook of, of information. It's not accurate. It's not, it's not good science. If anything, it may give them an ability to come up with a theory that they could then test in a randomized controlled trial. But this in and of itself says nothing about human application. Zero, none. As much as they wanna scream from the mountaintops in a headline, are eggs bad for your health? Maybe. Um, at the end of the day, it means nothing. This other one says bad news for egg lovers. No, it's not. This is not bad news for anything. All it means is, okay, you've created some kind of a theory that you now want to test in a randomized controlled trial. Good for you. Go test it. Because they're not going to find anything, you guys. This is more discrediting of the keto message. It's not so subtle anymore. They're going right for the jugular. All right, let's take a look. The study 
that looked at all these six large per perspective studies together that had 30,000 participants over 17 years found that eating an additional 300 milligrams a day of cholesterol in the diet uh, led to a 17% increased risk of cardiovascular disease and an 18% increased risk of premature death from any cause. So this is the games they play too, guys. So whenever you see percentages of risk change, you've got to know that is that is math. That is basically manipulation of the math. The actual increased risk is so minuscule, it, it shouldn't even be reported on. But they want to talk about increased risk. Ugh. There's just so much bad in this. But people are going to read these headlines today, and maybe you've got people in your life that will go, oh my gosh, are you eating that keto thing still, and you're still having all those eggs? I heard eggs will kill you. This is what we're up against. An egg alone uh, has about 185 milligrams of cholesterol, all of it in the yolk, and it had the same more is worse effect. Each additional half of an egg was associated with a 6% increased risk of uh, cardiovascular disease and an 8% increased risk of uh, early death. The study findings are observational. Yeah, no kidding. It means they didn't look at any actual patients. They looked at data. And I don't know about you, but I'd rather them look at actual people and actually test on people what it is that they're spewing out of their mouth. Because what they've done today is they've scared the bejeebies out of people eating something that is an extraordinarily healthy food for them to be consuming. Okay? Okay. Uh, the study findings are observational, cannot establish any kind of cause and effect, but no matter how heart healthy the rest of the person's diet is, the more eggs that are consumed, the greater the risk for cardiovascular events, coronary heart disease, stroke, heart failure, and premature death. No, it's not. They showed no such thing with this study. All they showed is an interesting correlation of a possibly connection to eggs, but we don't really know. See, here's the thing. How do they isolate that it was the eggs that did this? Why don't they look at the rest of the diet of the people in the studies? Well, number one, they're just looking at data. They're not actually looking at people. But if they just put people on an egg diet, would they get these same results? Would they have the same effects if they only ate all eggs and that's all they had to eat? That would be the way you test this. But no. They have other things in their diet, but they don't mention anything about this. They also don't mention anything about what the lifestyle is of these various people in the study. So we don't know, were they smokers? Were they under a very high stress job? Did they sleep well? All of those things matter as well in a lot of these markers. The same was true for dietary cholesterol, independent of all other dietary characteristics. The more cholesterol you ate in your diet, the higher the risk for disease. And this, guys, this was published in a very prestigious journal called the Journal of the American Medical Association. JAMA is like probably the biggest medical journal in the entire world. So this is getting credence where it does not deserve the kind of credence and the kind of coverage that it's getting today. If you're just joining us, we're going over a brand new study that's making all the rounds today in the health um, news section. And you're probably going to hear it on the nightly news. Oh, if you eat e more eggs in your diet, that leads to early death and cardiovascular disease. And we just go, here we go again. Seriously, are we still? Who actually still believes that eating eggs is going to do these things? The vilification of a real whole food is pretty stupid to me. Dr. Robert Eckel, by the way, Robert Eckel, American Diabetes Association. I know he was a past president. I'm not sure what his position is with them now, but he's a past president of the ADA. So take that for what it's worth. Wrote an editorial that accompanied this study, and he called the work 
far more comprehensive than previous reviews. There is now, quote, enough data to make a strong statement that eggs and overall dietary cholesterol intake remain important in affecting the risk of cardiovascular disease and more so the risk of all-cause mortality. The authors say that the average cholesterol consumption of Americans has not changed much over the last few decades, but even at that level, they found dietary cholesterol is tied to an increased risk for cardiovascular problems. So they just discredited their whole hypothesis because the hypothesis is that the more cholesterol you consume in your diet, the higher your risk of cardiovascular disease. But they just said, on average, over the past last few decades, the average cholesterol consumption of Americans has not changed very much. Guess what happened over the past few decades? Heart disease rates are worse in both men and women than they've ever been before. How do they resolve those two things? How do they get away with still blaming this on dietary cholesterol when dietary cholesterol has not changed dramatically in their own words over the last few decades and yet heart disease is worse now than it's ever been before? How do they reconcile that? There are many other factors for heart disease besides your diet and the numbers the authors cite indicate the percentage of actual or additional risk from a high cholesterol diet. So this effect is not very striking because heart disease is the most common cause of death in the United States, even more so than all cancers combined. Even a small relative increase in the rates of illness means a large increase in the number of deaths. This is scaremongering. That's all this is. They're just trying to scare people into making a drastic decision to remove eggs from their diet. That's disgusting to me. The study takes into account the general quality of the diet and adjusts for it. We really focus on the independent effects of eggs and dietary cholesterol. There is no way they did an independent effect of eggs and dietary cholesterol with looking at data. The only way they could manipulate that uh, to the point that they could actually control for all the variables is to do a randomized control trial. And they did not do that. What they did was they looked at data points. And in the data points, they, uh, they tried to pull out and extrapolate a lot of things. They don't know what the independent effects of eggs and dietary cholesterol were. How could they? The only way they could do that is that they only fed them dietary cholesterol uh, in the form of eggs. That's the only way they could have done that. Some people can eat a lot of eggs and a little of the cholesterol goes in the blood. Our study examined dietary cholesterol at the population level, but for individuals, there would be a lot of variation in the relationship between dietary cholesterol and heart disease. There is no, there is no correlation, no relationship between those things. It's been thoroughly debunked many, 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 many times. And yet they keep trying to revive this dead horse. <clears throat> this study found a very consistent association. Eggs had some advantages like amino acids, proteins, and minerals. And these are all beneficial. But you want to reduce the number of eggs, especially those egg yolks, as part of a healthy diet. We don't want people to walk away thinking they shouldn't eat any eggs that's just not right. the right message. Well, that's exactly the message that people are going to get. If you vilify eggs and you say that all of this stuff could possibly lead to early death, what do you expect the average everyday person to do? They're going to eliminate eggs. Then they talk about how it's the yolks that are causing the problems. What they're not telling you is that there's actually problems with an all egg white diet. Did you know that? If you only eat egg whites, and a lot of women especially... Uh, when they're eating a low-fat diet, they'll eat an egg white omelet or something like that. Did you know if 5% of your total calorie intake comes from egg whites, that you're increasing your risk of disease? Why? Because there is this, there's this um, thing that is, it's an anti-nutrient is what it's called, in egg whites called avidin. Go look it up. A-V-I-D-I-N. Avidin when it gets into enough of the diet 
up to 5% of your total calories actually can cause a lot of health problems. And yet all these people are eating egg whites because of studies like this one that's scaring the bejeebies out of them that they need to be eliminating the cholesterol from their diet because of supposed heart health risks. It's crazy. Current recommendations regarding dietary cholesterol and eggs in particular are confusing. The Dietary Guidelines for Americans, which came out in 2015, published by the Department of Health and Human Services and the Department of Agriculture, states that we should, quote, eat as little cholesterol as possible while consuming a healthy eating pattern. Uh, but the scientific report that accompanies those guidelines says cholesterol is not a nutrient of concern for overconsumption, which we've talked about here before. They admitted in the 2015 dietary guidelines that we no longer have to worry about cholesterol being a nutrient of concern. So this new study, you guys, my theory as to why it's coming out in 2019 is what are they doing in 2020? Oh, yeah. They're creating the new dietary guidelines for Americans. And so if they can put this big study in the Journal of the American Medical Association that makes the claim that eating more eggs, especially those dastardly cholesterol-rich egg yolks, and that it will increase your risk of heart disease and increase, increase your risk of premature death, if they put that out there one year before the dietary guidelines are created, guess what they're going to probably do in 2020 with the dietary guidelines? Oh, well, we have overwhelming evidence. A very prestigious, peer-reviewed journal, American Medical Association. So we've got to say, limit your eggs to three or two or whatever they're going to say a day. Guys, trust me on this one. This has an agenda with it. This doesn't come without some strings. Uh, Dr. Frank Hugh, a professor of nutrition at Harvard uh, School of Public Health, found the work interesting, carefully carried out, but he says the results are surprising because here even a half egg a day will make a difference. This study seems to find so much stronger association than what has previously been found. Yeah, Dr. Hugh has been out there for many years uh, basically vilifying saturated fat. So if he's saying bad stuff about eggs and cholesterol, it's not a surprise. They do say in this New York Times article that the study has limitations and that the data depended on self-reporting of what people ate. We've talked about this before. Not only are they looking at data, not actually people, but the people that were in the data that they looked at self-reported. What? Did, uh, how many eggs did you eat in the last three years? If I asked you guys that, would you know how many eggs you've had in the last three years? I don't even know in the last three weeks, and I've got a bunch of chickens in my backyard. I got unlimited access to eggs, and I have no idea how many eggs I've eaten. A bunch. I do know that. Uh, and the analyzed studies used varying methods for collecting the diet information. See, this is the thing, you guys. They looked at six different studies. One study might have done a survey. Another study, they might have actually directly measured, um, you know, and, and watched them as they put the uh, food in their mouth and that kind of thing. Another study, they might have said, okay, we'll keep track of it and report it. So there's so many different collection methods. How do you have any consistency amongst the data when you smoosh them all together like they've done in this new study? The researchers also relied on a single measurement of egg and dietary cholesterol consumption, even though diets can change over time. And that's the thing, guys. They're isolating that the eggs created all these effects, but how do they know that? If they had grains with those eggs, was it the grains or was it the eggs? If they had... Uh, Coca-Cola with those eggs. Was it, the, was it the eggs or the Coca-Cola? We don't know. And yet they're making the claim that it was the eggs. The only way they can actually test that eggs will raise your heart disease and death risk, the only way they could physically do that is to do a randomized controlled trial of a couple hundred people, um, put them in a metabolic ward for a period of time, feed them only eggs for that period of time. Only eggs. 
Now, they would never do that because they, they're under this assumption that the brain needs carbohydrate. They know if they actually did that, they would prove a ketogenic diet has veracity. And they can't have that. Mm -mm. I would sign up for that, by the way. An all-egg diet for, what, 30 days? 60 days? I'd do that. I've done that. 30 days. Sounds fun, actually. Uh, Dr. Allen said of the latest study, despite all the strengths, future studies are needed to understand why we're getting such conflicting findings across populations and whether there are some people whom eating eggs is bad and others who are not affected. I would even go so far as to say not just some who are not affected, some who get benefit. When you eat eggs, your triglycerides go down. When you eat eggs, your HDL cholesterol goes up. When you eat eggs, you get satiety out the wazoo. When you eat eggs, by the way, they're very delicious, especially from backyard chickens. When you eat eggs, you get so many amazing benefits that you just don't even realize. It is literally, you guys, God's perfect food which is what makes this vilification of eggs all over again. Are we still living in the 1980s? Remember the 1980s Time Magazine had the little eggs for the eyes and the bacon as a sad face? Are we still living in the 1980s thinking that those eggs are somehow causing harm to our bodies? Seriously? Are we still going down that road? Have they not looked at all the great work of people like Gary Taubes? And people like Nina Teicholz, my friend Liz Wolf, a nutritional therapy practitioner, has a book called Eat the Yolks. Go look it up, you guys. She makes the argument. It's the yolks you want. And I would say, in honor of this new study, we need to go get us some eggs and throw away the egg whites and just pop the yolk. Because the yolk is where all the nutrition is. It, it's just unbelievable. All right, let me look at this other article. This was in Northwestern. Bad news for egg lovers. Higher egg and cholesterol consumption hikes heart disease and death risk. All right, let's see what new they had in here. There was something in here that I wanted to highlight. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. So yes, here it is. So in here, they're the ones that made the claim that the study findings, this study in the Journal of the American Medical Association that's dismissing eggs because it's raising cholesterol, uh, uh, the cholesterol in eggs is raising heart disease risk and death, means that our current U.S. dietary guideline recommendations for dietary cholesterol in eggs may need to be re-evaluated. That is the study authors that are saying this. So see, guys, they're telling us their agenda. Their agenda is we don't like it that you removed the restrictions on eggs. We don't like it that you said cholesterol is no longer a nutrient of concern. We want to change that back so that then we can continue to vilify eggs, continue to vilify cholesterol, continue to vilify saturated fat because we are going to lose the battle if people continue to believe that cholesterol is not a nutrient of concern. Mark my words, guys. This is all about impacting those 2020 dietary guidelines, which are being evaluated next year. One of the key committee men, by the way, that just got on the committee is a vegan. How many keto people, paleo people, people that are pro eggs and meat are on the dietary guidelines committee right now? I haven't seen any yet. So I'm not holding my breath that we're going to have a continuation of cholesterol no longer being a nutrient of concern, sadly. Uh, let's see what else is in here. Should I stop eating eggs? Based on the study, people should keep their dietary cholesterol intake low by reducing cholesterol-rich foods such as eggs and red meat. See, there it is. They're trying to make us all vegan. Everybody's like, oh, I wish you wouldn't say that they're trying to make us vegan. Yeah, they are. This is a concerted effort, you guys, because keto has gotten so popular. This is a very organized, concerted effort to push the vilification of real whole food-based fats like red meat and eggs and butter and all this stuff that's happening lately. It's a very deliberate attempt to discredit us and to push the vegan message. 
Somebody's paying a lot of money to make this happen. Don't completely banish eggs and other cholesterol foods from your meals because eggs and red meat are good sources of nutrients like amino acids, iron, and choline. Instead, choose the egg whites, which we talked about why that's not a good idea a while ago with the avidin. Uh, instead of whole eggs or eat only eat whole eggs in moderation. There's that M word. Does anybody know what the bleep moderation means? What, what is a moderate amount of eggs? One? Half a one? Two? Seven? How many is moderation? I hate that word, man. We want to remind people there is still cholesterol in eggs. Yeah, I want it. I want that cholesterol. Mm -mm. Yummy, yummy, hashtag cholesterol. Specifically the yolks, and this will have a harmful effect. There is no harm that comes from eating egg yolks. None. None. So they used uh, food frequency questionnaires, took a diet history, uh, the study uh, had up to 31 years of follow-up, which was an average of 17 and a half years, 5,400 cardiovascular events over that time, 6,132 uh, deaths were diagnosed. And yeah, I mean, this study, the authors of the study, Linda Van Horn, Marilyn Cornelis, Dr. John Wilkins, Dr. Hong Yan Ning, Mercedes Carnathon, Dr. Philip Greenland, Lai Hu Zhao, and Dr. Donald Lloyd Jones. Those were the researchers that were involved at Northwestern in this study. And they have done an extraordinarily huge, great disservice to the nutritional health world today. Because this study is going to set back all of those people that would stand to benefit from eating eggs. And I don't understand why anyone would be against eggs. Eggs literally have the, perf the perfect ratio of carbohydrate, fat, and protein to make your body run efficiently, optimally, I would argue. And like I said, if all they fed you over a period of time was just eggs, you would be more healthy than most of the population. But they want to make the argument that you're increasing your risk of death and heart disease from eating eggs. Where's the vilification of Coca-Cola? Where is the vilification of Doritos? Where is the vilification of all this crappy garbage that dominates the so-called food supply these days? Our priorities are out of balance. We want to go after foods that are real, whole, natural, God-given foods like eggs and red meat and butter when the real culprits in damage to our health are all those crappy garbage that I talk about all the time. It's just amazing to me how we get away, how they get away with trying to vilify real whole foods, real whole foods that actually nourish the body and give it benefit. Why aren't we going after processed foods a lot more? It seems to me that all of these researchers would much rather diss on some real whole food sources than to ever say, look what this processed crappy garbage is doing to your body. Now, there's those studies out there too, but by and large, it seems like they would rather put down a good, healthy, real foods-based diet like keto than to put down the crappy garbage diet. And that's just how I feel. It's, it's just so bizarre to me that you would discourage people from eating a food that's perfectly healthy for them, optimally healthy for them, I would argue. What's that going to drive them to? Okay, they give up the eggs. What are they going to eat now? Instant oatmeal instead of eggs? Is that what you want? Yeah, they probably do. I, I don't know. But the bottom line in this Jimmy Rance is who, in 2019, who actually still believes that eating eggs raises heart disease and leads to an early death? 
Nobody that's looking at the actual science because the actual science is showing nothing of the sort. All right, let's see what you guys have to say. Welcome in, welcome in. Thanks for being here for this episode of Jimmy Rants. Zellmaster says, what the heck is this exactly? You're seeing it. <laughs> Lindy says, guess what I ate to break my fast just now? Um, gee, I wonder, is it what we talked about here today? Uh, Angel says, I eat two to three eggs a day and I'm very happy with it. Yeah, and you're probably very healthy because of that as well. Bridget says, my mother a child of the 50s and 60s, always told me eggs can cause high cholesterol. She never made any eggs. Bridget, that's sad. I hope you're making up for lost time now that you're an adult. Sherry says, eggs have choline, which is beneficial in methylation pathways. I'm not buying this. I just love eggs. Well, eggs are very healthy. And so, yes, thank you for mentioning the choline in them. There's so many, so many nutrients that are good and beneficial to your body and eggs, it would be silly for anyone to claim that they're somehow unhealthy. Semi-Tough One says, if I was a researcher, I would be embarrassed and ashamed to have my name on that study like that. It's all about the Benjamins. I can guarantee you, I don't have proof of this, but I can almost guarantee you that that study was bought and paid for by uh, the vegans. It has to be. Because they're the ones, the vegans are the ones that say eating one egg is like smoking six cigarettes or something like that. Um, and of course, they use spurious data and research to support that claim. But it gets a big headline. And that's all they want. The vegans have become very adept at playing the cultural war. And they play the media like a, like a fiddle. And the media lops it up. And of course, they're very well funded, the vegan movement. I would not be surprised if their fingerprints are all over this new study. My dog and I eat eggs every single day and we're healthier than we've ever been, says Texas Livingston. Yep. Man, my nose is itching today. My doctor told me to stop eating eggs or I would get a heart attack. Yeah, allow me, should doctors buy into... Uh, all of this kind of data. Oh, scientific data. It's in the Journal of the American Medical Association. How can it be wrong? To which you say, um, it's just an observational study of previous data. It doesn't really apply to humans. Oh, but it's a study in the JAMA. And JAMA is very highly respected. Okay, great. It's highly respected, but it doesn't really tell me anything about human application. They've now got a theory to test. They have their theory. Now run with the theory before you scare the bejeebies out of people. Alberto says, I was just navigating on my Facebook uh, and a local news in Spanish posted a report about eating three eggs a day being dangerous. Yeah, that's this study, Alberto, that I just mentioned. Vegans are going to go hard into meat-based foods. <laughs> have to. Uh, Jesse says, coming in late eggs. I thought this argument was put to bed long ago. A resurgence. Jesse, Yes, they pull this kind of crap. And yes, this has been laid to rest many a time. Um, I thought when Time Magazine did their big article uh, just a few years back where they reversed the, the sad face with the, with the eggs and the bacon with the, the sad mouth, I thought when they, when they said fat and cholesterol are not as bad as once thought that we were moving things around. And guys, don't be discouraged. This is a sign that we are scaring them half to death. All of us Freaky Friday uh, keto people out here that are eating eggs um, and buying butter and buying red meat um, and making it a part of our healthy diet. They don't like that. And for whatever their reasons, they're going to continue to try to vilify these things that we know are healthy for our bodies. Uh, Matias says, eggs rock. Yes, they do. Dory says, here we go again. Yeah, exactly, Dory. You know. Um, hey, Potsy, go sit on an egg, the Fonz. Is that what I think of their study? <laughs> Sign me up. I'll eat more eggs for them, says Ashton. Oh, you'll do the 30 days in a metabolic ward. Yeah, it'd be pretty, uh, pretty awesome. It's your lifestyle for a while. Keto Cheeto Mama. Thank you who founded or funded, I guess you said, Olga, their research. 
It doesn't say in these news articles, but again, I would not be surprised if behind the scenes we have the vegan leaders and their fingerprints all over this. It would not surprise me at all. Then I'm going to die soon because eggs are my staple, says Keto Cheeto, exactly. Uh, hands up if you're buying it. Yeah, nobody's raising their hand, Dory. Not at all. Sam says, and I was on, when I was on my cholesterol and weight both went up, they kept telling me to cut it. I was down to bare nothing. It didn't work. Now I'm not on keto and now every, I, I don't know what you're saying, but I think you're saying something along the lines of your cholesterol and your weight were up and they wanted you to cut down on your eggs. Yeah, I, I don't know what you were asking. Sorry. Try to speak English so I can read it. <laughs> Ashton says, another scare tactic to get people away from eating real food and back to eating crappy food, no money, and getting people healthy. Yeah, I'm, man, I hate being cynical, but I think you're right. Eating meat, meat is like smoking 30 cigarettes a day, and eating eggs is like looking at the sun for three hours. <laughs> Alberto, such a snarky one. Uh, let's see here. Just standing here watching my bacon and egg sizzle. <laughs> they cover their uh, butts by saying we need more studies to confirm this study. Alberto, they always put that at the end of the studies. Well, we need more research to actually confirm these findings, which is true. But the problem is they make a big splash in the media and that's what they wanted. And of course, I've talked to a few of these researchers when studies come out and the headlines are all wonky and the researchers are like, we know we didn't intend that message to get out there. But what happens is they send these abstracts to these news reporters and it's the news reporters that come up with these funky angles to the story. So it's not always the fault of the researchers, but that's where the researchers have to be extraordinarily clear about what their study means. Um, and this one was very obviously an attack on a real whole food. Semi-Tough says, 18-pack eggs from my friends, chickens in my passenger seat right now. Good for you. So eggs are bad again, says Amy. I wish they'd make up their mind. I'll just wait over here with my bacon and eggs while they figure it out. In the meantime, I'm healthier than I've been in 25 years. Amy, you and me both. Um, and the joy that those chickens back there are having uh, because we treat them well and we feed them well and we let them roam and be chickens. You can't tell me that that love and care that we put into taking care of those chickens doesn't end up in that egg. Because when I'm eating an egg from my girls and they're very faithful, 27 chickens, we get about 20-ish eggs a day. And they're, they're very consistent in laying and it's just it's disgusting to me that there would be anything said badly about chickens that are fed well and taken care of and and all the things that we do with ours and to say that their eggs are somehow harmful i would beg to differ heavily beg to differ it all comes down to control control the food control the people val you're right they're losing control of the food and the people Jesse says, Stephanie Holbrook and I had a discussion on the M word yesterday. Uh, what does it mean? The M word. Which M word? Mortality? Which M word? Eggs are full of cholesterol because it's used to build a living creature. Alberto, that's exactly right. People forget the yolk of an egg has to be incredibly nutrient dense. Why? Because that yolk is what turns into a chicken. So if a whole chicken is created from that yolk, don't you know there's all kinds of really healthy elements in that egg yolk? Obviously. It's obvious to anyone, anybody paying attention. Uh, we have them all scared. Lots of big money to be lost because of keto. Ashton, that's right. My local target is always out of Vital Pastures eggs. Somebody's buying them, says Sophia. Sophia. <laughs> Pig Palooza, most of my family still believes in this uh, eggs myth. Doesn't matter how much proof I show them, I just keep sharing the truth. 
hoping they will turn around because I eat a ton and will continue to do so. Well, that's the thing. They see you eating eggs and nothing bad happens to you. They, it's got to force reasonable people to start thinking. What in the world's going on? I thought eggs were the, you know, why you had heart disease, blah, 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 blah. And we're, we're all proving them wrong. Anne-Marie, so much nutritional value in eggs, loved them, but was brought up fearing them, but not anymore. Yeah. Yeah, Mama uh, did the whole egg white thing. We used to buy the little cartons of egg white. It's crazy. Val says, my cats love eating egg yolks. They won't touch the whites. They're smarter than some people. Yeah, when whenever I've accidentally dropped an egg on the way back to bringing them inside the house, the girls back there, yes, the chickens will eat the egg yolk. They go right for the yolk. They don't touch the white at all. So even chickens know where the good source of the uh, nutrition is in the eggs they're laying. You're making me crave eggs now, says Sophia. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, hello, Amy Hale. How are you? Uh, what was it that Tom always said? Follow the money. <sighs> I'm trying to think what the money source would be in this case, Amy. Um by vilifying eggs, I guess you're saying that they, it would drive them to carbohydrate-based foods because if you get them away from real whole foods, you vilify cholesterol, you vilify red meat and fat and butter, what's left? I guess that's where you're going with that line of thinking and I, I don't disagree, it's probably true. Real food healing, when I saw this headline this morning, I immediately thought of you, I knew a rant was coming. You know me well. Um, and like I said, I've known about this pretty much the whole week. Um, I get notifications and I have behind the scenes people working that give me information about new studies that are coming. And so this one has been under embargo until today. Today was the first time we were allowed to talk about it. So uh, yeah, I've known about this for a little while. Rat Dog Finney, I had six hens uh, since 2014. They are amazing animals and a joy to raise. I love chickens. Yeah, if you have the ability to get chickens, get chickens. Um, it's one of the best things that we ever did uh, was get those backyard chickens. Yeah, they're, they're very happy. We take care of them. Don't talk crap about my chickens, says Tori. <laughs> Debbie says uh, they want to take our meat and now our eggs. You know, they're trying desperately to take away every real whole food because I think Amy is on to something. If they take away all these healthy real whole foods that all of us keto people are eating and they scare enough people into thinking those things are somehow harming their bodies, then it will drive a lot of people to carbohydrate-based processed foods. There's no other... Where else would they go? What else are they going to get if they're not going to get red meat? They're not going to get eggs and butter and all this stuff that they're vilifying. Um, it drives people to get the bad stuff. It's a good theory. Sophia says, whenever I go to breakfast with my friends and they order an egg white omelet, I ask the waitress if I can have the yolks. They all think I'm kidding, but I'm not. Oh, I've done that before. I have looked on the menu at some restaurants before, and it says, uh, to get egg whites, it's 65 cents more to just get egg whites. And I did that one time. I, I said, so um, will you pay me 65 cents off of my bill to grab the yolk from that white? <laughs> the waitress was not amused. I was laughing hysterically. No guinea fowl as per HOA. I think they're uh, in on it, says Jesse. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so the bottom line of this Jamie Ranch, you guys, is we're seeing more and more studies coming out that are trying to vilify real whole food based foods that are grounded in dietary cholesterol, saturated fat, and all of the things that we know as ketonians are healthy for our bodies. And they're going to keep trying, guys. They're going to keep coming out with these studies. Oh, it's a prestigious journal of the American Medical Association, so that can't possibly be a bad thing. They, they wouldn't possibly publish anything that wasn't absolutely true. Yeah, they would, and they are. Because who actually believes eating eggs raises heart disease and death risk? 
Nobody in their right mind that's actually paying attention ever would. Amy says, yes, it creates hysteria in the hopes that people start running back to low-fat junk food and processed foods. Keto has been dinging the scales for processed foods and weight loss companies. Yeah, we've talked about that quite a bit on Jimmy Rants, Amy, with Weight Watchers losing over three-fourths of their value. Uh, we're seeing Coca-Cola having to shift their business model over to more water, bottled water, and that kind of thing to try to remain viable as a company. We're seeing Kraft Foods buy up companies like Primal Nutrition, uh, Primal Kitchen to uh, shift away from the crap that they've been peddling all these years. We're seeing positive signs across the board, you guys, that keto is making a huge difference in the culture. And it's got a lot of people running scared. A lot of people that have gotten away with bloody murder for far too long. And we're on to them. And we're changing the culture. I have been in this space for 15 years. And I talked about in the early days of my work that we need to see a paradigm shift take place in a major way. And back then I always talked about it being maybe 25 years in the making. We're 15 years later and the paradigm shift is already underway. And we're under against so much attack right now because there are people that are not happy that all of these positive messages about saturated fat and cholesterol and getting into ketosis are getting out there in a big way and people are believing them because they're getting great results in both their weight loss and their health goals. And it's nothing but a beautiful thing. All right, guys, that's it for this episode of Jimmy Rants. JimmyRants.com is the website. As always, you can engage live in the content. You got to go follow me on Instagram. So go follow me now at Livin Low Carb Man, L I V I N L O W C A R B M A N. Once you're there, you can engage live, just like all my amazing Jimmy Ranchers here today. Thank you guys for being here. If you missed the live, watch it on replay for up to 24 hours. After 24 hours, poof, it does disappear from Instagram. So go follow me on YouTube. Type in a keyword, Jimmy Rants. You will find the show. Finally, we have a Jimmy Rants podcast. And this week has been loaded with lots of really good uh, Jimmy Rants that are probably going to turn into podcasts. So go check out the Jimmy Rants podcast on Apple Podcasts as well as Stitcher. All of these links, you guys, are at jimmyrants.com. So until next time, we'll see you then.